What's going on everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I have three, maybe four videos today, so don't rely on your notifications. Just check back at 147 and perhaps nine o'clock central today for new topics. I know I've been floating around in the entertainment news section for quite some time, and I've got one video on that today, but I'm also going to try to cover a little bit more of the re more recent gaming news, including just how bad Google Stadia sounds, as well as some Wolfenstein Youngblood news. Uh, did you know that video game was actually coming out this week? Most people didn't. Now, when Stadia was announced, I was kind of optimistic, only because I had long resided to the fact that cloud gaming is the future, whether we want it or not, meaning uh, most people's initial turnoff to Stadia was that it's gaming in the cloud and that they don't have the bandwidth to do it. But if you look at what new consoles are doing, quote unquote consoles these days, the PlayStation 5 and the new Microsoft Xbox seem to be leaning more heavily into cloud gaming as well, simply because I'm assuming uh, people are more likely to make digital download purchases, it's easier to distribute, and I think uh, just like how consoles went diskless, even though nobody was asking for it, we're going to get stuck with games in the cloud anyway. Insert angry old man yelling at cloud gif here. Now, there was an AMA last week um, from the Google Stadia product team, and it went hilariously bad. Uh, from what I understood initially was my optimism was basically, hey, maybe they'll give you a nice arsenal of free games up front. And you, I, I was sure that buying games on Stadia would be cheaper, but that is now incorrect. We know that you will basically be paying full price for a game that resides entirely in the cloud, and you will be relying on Google, of all people, to allow you to access it. And we all know what they do with uh, just about everything that they don't like, should you have opinions online. Uh, and I wouldn't put it past them to start restricting people access to their games if they say or do anything they don't like online. Now, the biggest takeaways from the AMA were as follows. Uh, this is a decent article by Paul Tassi over on Forbes, uh, who once in a while does some good things. Uh, so uh, they let off saying, to be clear, Stadia Pro is not Netflix for games. Like some people have mentioned, a closer comparison would be Xbox Live or PlayStation Plus. The Pro subscribers get H 4K and HDR streaming, 5.1 digital sound, exclusive discounts, and they always say exclusive discounts, but we never really know what that is. Just like how Epic Game Store tells us, hey, it's an exclusive, but you're going to get some discounts on what? You know, some random DLC item we didn't want? Uh, roughly one free game per month, give or take. I mean, so then that means zero? You have the possibility of getting zero free games. If you take one away from one, it's zero. Um, starting with Destiny 2. Yay. Wow. Everybody's clamoring to get Destiny 2. This sounds uh, not good, he says. The assumption was indeed from the start that Stadia would be some new stab at Netflix for games. Kind of similar to Xbox, games pa Xbox Game Pass or Uplay Plus, which now offer 100 plus free games with a $10 to $15 subscription. It's not free. You sound like my wife justifying shopping at Kohl's with using her Kohl's cash. You're still paying $10 to $15 a month to get access to those games anyway. Plus access to new, for, uh, new release first party titles at launch to boot. I see where this is going. It'll probably be some Stadia... Uh, exclusive baloney to force people to use it, but we'll see. Uh, but Google City is not that. Slowly building up a f tiny free arsenal, arsenal of titles one at a time. The draw is that you don't need console hardware, but a Stadia controller is 25% the cost of a console. And if we look at, for example, as the new generation of consoles bring in, the PlayStation 5 and, and the new Xbox um, you'll be able to get a PlayStation 4 Pro for a couple hundred bucks. You can even buy them used for 100 to 150 bucks. I've seen them sell for on eBay. All you need to do is purchase the games on the service individually, removing this as far from Netflix-like as it could possibly be. Despite being centered around streaming, Stadia is not a streaming service in the traditional sense. It's more just an online storefront that sells games that rely on streaming instead of digital downloads. It just sounds like Amazon Video Store, minus the hundreds of free Amazon Prime movies and shows. Again, they're not free. You're still paying for Prime, but I suppose I'm being nitpicky. Stadia wants to compare itself to Xbox Live Gold or PlayStation Plus, 
And yet at $120 a year for the 4K streaming tier, it's effectively twice the price of either of those. Again, cutting into its but no hardware selling point. Five years of premium Google Stadia and the increase over gold or plus means you essentially bought a console anyway. All this leads me to the point I've been making for a while now. I have no idea who Google Stadia is supposed to be for. And this is an interesting point. Uh, I, I've questioned this often. You know, I, I know that I'm older and I'm probably like not a traditional gamer anymore. But, you know, where they show in the demonstration, oh, look how easily I can go from my laptop to my cell phone to my to my desktop. I mean, who are you targeting? I mean, the... The on-the-go gamer seems like the person to be targeting for that, and it's easy to think that that's for mobile gamers, but mobile gamers want everything for free. Uh, they're not interested in paying not only a monthly subscription for Stadia, but also for the games on top of that. If you look at a hardcore gamer, there's no way on earth a hardcore gamer is going to want to play the Doom Eternal on their, on their cell phone except for the lulls. It's not going to be a good experience. I don't care what anyone says. That's why most people buy these big fancy you know, uh, you know, curved gaming monitors. It's they don't want to play on their cell phones or their tablets. It's just not uh, interesting. So you've ruled out the mobile market. You've ruled out the hardcore gamers. And as I've suspected, essentially, you've got just the the console gamers. And why would the console gamers buy any product? Why would they buy Stadia, not just the newest console? Right? I could see, for example, you could make the argument that let's say Madden, something that is you know, relatively uh, easy to play on a controller, a controller you plug into your cell phone or your tablet, and you're going on the road or you travel a lot and you want to play Madden at home or you want to play Madden on, on your cell phone while you're traveling. Okay, fine. That's like, you know, one example. But we do have remote play as it exists already with the consoles. So I'm not sure. And again, you're also still paying the full price for that game plus a monthly subscription fee for Stadia plus the price of the controller. As a hardcore gamer, I would go. I would have considered getting Stadia to play some third-party titles I like on the go, but knowing it's going to be a paltry list of free games, I'm going to have to rebuy them all for Stadia if I want to do that. Suddenly, it's far less appealing. Even Destiny 2, where I'm a super fan, I still have to rebuy most of the DLC to stay current. And I'm already going to be doing that on PC once Cross saves out. That's not appealing either. Goes on to say, conversely, I've heard the argument that Stadia is for non-gamers or casual mobile type gamers, a way to get them into the hardcore gaming experience because surely that's the only barrier. Okay, so it looks like he goes on to debunk this as well. Badly misunderstands a casual mobile market. If you're a mobile gamer, you're gonna hate both paying full price, $60 for a game, and if you do opt for a price streaming tier, $120 a year. Now remember, there is a free tier on Google Stadia. Uh, and most people don't need 4K gaming. I, I just don't, you know, 4K gaming is something cool. HDR also cool. Ray tracing, all this stuff is cool. But it appears so, uh, and that's like a must-have for less than one percent of gamers. Most gamers are fine playing on like a 720p TV. That's just the reality of it. Um, you know, does that sound like anything a mobile? I'm sorry. If you opt to pay for higher price streaming tier, it's $120 a year subscription. Does that sound like anything a mobile gamer would be interested in, hardware or no? Additionally, there's a huge leap that most people seem to forget between mobile-style games and something that require a controller to play. Often the barrier is not the cost of the hardware, but the hardware itself. My mom might be world-ranked in Candy Crush, uh, but putting a dual-stick controller in her hand, she won't know it from down. Literally, she just ends up staring at the sky and spinning in circles. So if it's not for hardcore gamers and it can't build the bridge for most casuals, what is Stadia even going for? Xbox Game Pass and Uplay Plus definitely look infinitely more like Netflix for games. The industry is moving toward, but that isn't what Stadia is at all. Uh, the more I hear about the st about Stadia, the less confident I am. It's going to do anything close to a game changer for the industry. Google pitching it is. We'll know more when it launches in full, but for now it remains confounding. Now, there are other articles about this. Um, you know, for example, the Ubisoft CEO says that porting games to Google Stadia cost is, quote, not that high. The cost, the extra cost just to make games work well on Stadia is not that high, Guillermo said. Uh, it's part of our pipeline now, and we have a good relationship with Stadia to make sure it's profitable for us. The technical details of Google's upcoming streaming platform have been murky since they've been released. I previously assumed Stadia would essentially stream PC version that I could download elsewhere, but the process is more involved. So you're going to end up now relying on a separate port 
uh, for Stadia, which means uh, you open yourself up to a worse version. I mean, look at all the times we see terrible PC ports of games. Are we going to have that same problem with Stadia? As Gamma Sutra points out, Ubisoft's smooth operation might be a special case here. The company was an early partner with Google on Stadia. Last year, some players got to try out Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Uh, it's reasonable to assume that Stadia port would generally be a lighter workload than, say, a couple a console port of a PC version, if it already exists at the very least, if you don't have to worry about overworking Stadia's maxed-out machines running the game. Uh, though challenges unique to streaming could present new considerations for ports in the future, like input delay in multiplayer games. Now, we're talking, that's a lot of um, the drawback. People talk about input delay. That's essentially the time it takes from your you know your handheld controller to make something happen in the game uh, this is obviously an issue but also again i'll point out an issue that's only important to ultra high hardcore players remember as ultra hardcore you might be one or two percent um, even if we took everybody that watched this channel everybody that was subscribed to this channel what five hundred thousand people or something like that we represent a tiny portion of the entire gaming market uh, there are many 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 more people that show up at Walmart at midnight and buy the latest Madden or buy the latest NBA 2K or buy the latest um, whatever, you know, and uh, they don't care. A, a millisecond more on input delay I don't think is going to affect their experience. They probably won't even notice it. But the fact remains that Google Stadia seems to be a product without a home. You know, is I think if I had to place it, is it the new Gmail or is it the new Google Glass? Well, based on this AMA, I'm going to put it squarely in the Google Glass category. I was certain that you were going to get games at a discounted price for this. It's mind boggling that they wouldn't do that. And on top of that, sorry, I'm not trusting Google to manage my games as long as I possibly have the option. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.